former army intelligence officer has told the BBC that an investigation into abuse at a boy's home in East Belfast back in the 1970s was stopped by MI5. Five years later, the police discovered evidence of abuse at the Kincora home. Northern Ireland's first minister has described the child abuse there as a national scandal that needs to be the subject of a new inquiry. Here's our Ireland correspondent, Chris Buckler. Throughout the 1970s, teenage boys were taken to Concora when they'd nowhere else to go. They arrived here from broken homes and dysfunctional families, but they ended up in a place where many were routinely sexually abused. In the early 1980s, three men, including the prominent loyalist William McGrath, were convicted of a series of offences. But five years earlier, at the height of the troubles, an army intelligence officer had raised concerns about Concora based on information from an agent known as Royal Flush. However, a senior MI5 man ordered him to halt his inquiries. He told me not just to stop any investigation into Kincora and McGrath, but to drop Royal Flush. That was it. There have long been claims of a cover-up at Kincora and suggestions that people of influence were involved in abusing boys here. There is an inquiry taking place in Northern Ireland into historical institutional abuse, and that includes Concora. However, its powers of investigation are extremely limited. And Northern Ireland's First Minister has indicated that he doesn't believe it's capable of uncovering what truly happened here. As a result, he's written to the Prime Minister and asked for the Concora scandal to be included in the abuse inquiry that's being planned by the Home Office. People did take their lives. Uh, after having been questioned by the police uh, on the, these issues. There are matters which, when you put them to, together, would indicate clearly uh, there was uh, uh, the knowledge of people in very high positions in Northern Ireland at that uh, time. And some claim what started at this care home had links to places and people far away from the streets in East Belfast, where Concora is a word associated with scandal and shame. Paedophile groups in the 70s form very close alliances purely for protection, if nothing else. And it may well be that some of those links are very important when we think of why, for example, the army and the police were not allowed to take action. Like so much of the sexual abuse now under investigation, the crimes at Concora are regarded as historical. But for victims like Clint Massey, it's a past that still haunts. I just want to see the building gone. I want to turn up here one day and just see an empty space. But that, then I'll know it's gone. You know. This house hid many secrets, and some of them are still waiting to be exposed. Chris Buckler, BBC News, Belfast. In the mid-1970s, an MI5 officer in Northern Ireland was told that boys were being raped at a care home, but it's alleged that he covered it up. As a result, young men continued to be abused for a further five years. The question that has never been properly answered is why. What happened at the home, Kinkora, represents a scandal that many believe stretched well beyond Belfast, perhaps even as far as Westminster. There have been fresh calls from all political parties in Northern Ireland for Kinkora to be included in the inquiry into abuse that's been ordered by the Home Secretary, Theresa May. Our Ireland correspondent, Andy Martin, has been speaking to an army intelligence officer who tried to get the abuse stopped and to some of the victims of the paedophiles. We recognise that this is total war. William McGrath was a unionist who ran a political group called Tara, which flirted with paramilitarism. He was curiously well connected and informed, but in the 70s he was also the housemaster at a boys' home and a prolific child rapist. It's like a wee cry that it's my way of letting the world know that I'm struggling here. Clint Massey was raped by McGrath the day he arrived at Kincora in 1973. He's still suffering. Started slashing my arms and my legs. Up there and there's other parts of my body. 
At least 21 boys were abused there on a daily basis. McGrath was eventually jailed in 1980 along with two other staff at the home, but allegations have persisted that the paedophile ring which abused boys from Concora was much, much wider. Clint believes it was run in order to incriminate and thereafter control figures who had influence in the Northern Ireland conflict. By 1974, McGrath's unionist and loyalist connections had brought him to the attention of army intelligence. The loyalist affairs increasingly came in my direction. Brian Gemmell has never been identified before, but he commanded the military's intelligence and security section during the mayhem of the Troubles in 1974. He recruited two assets who had been close to McGrath, one of whom knew of the abuses at the home and wanted them stopped. The other thing that I learned from him was that the boys were taken out of Kinkora and taken, um, it was stated by him, his phrase was, to a big house or stately home in County Fermanagh where they would attend parties. They were being sourced um, for the sexual gratification of the people who came to the parties. And only that these were you no know, big and important people. Captain Gemmell has since identified some figures he strongly believes to have been involved who were leading names in Ulster political society and the British establishment. And I believe what was going on was that within the bigger national network of people who were involved in this, that uh, Northern Ireland, neatly on the fringes, out of the way, unseen, less monitored, was a convenient place for these um, wicked impulses and drives to be indulged he prepared his report and took it to the man known as C, the head of intelligence, MI5 in Northern Ireland, with whom he had enjoyed an excellent relationship up until that point. I was summoned to go and see him. I went up thinking, he's going to be pleased with me. He bowled me out. He was rude and offensive and hostile. And I'll never forget one of the remarks that he made, which was very clear talking about the security service, we do not have anything to do with homosexual relations and this kind of thing. And he told me not just to stop any investigation into Kinkora and McGrath, but that was it. Captain Gemmell's testimony is supported by at least two other army officers. He believes that MI5 knew of the Kinkora abuse long before he brought it to their attention and were content to allow boys to be raped long afterwards so that leverage could be applied to the figures of influence who preyed on the often troubled young men. He insists that he has no desire to harm MI5 but does want Kinkora to become part of the Westminster Abuse Inquiry for the same reason as Clint Massey. If the Concora story, if it was just really kept local, it can get quite easily get buried. I, I, I want Westminster to be here and what happened here. And why do you want yeah. Westminster to know what happened in Concora? I always want to believe that the state will do always do the right thing. And I'm clearly saying it, that the state, they knew what was going to happen to me when I walked in there and they were prepared to let it happen. Some of them boys took their own lives. No, 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 the end doesn't justify the means. That the security services and even some politicians used such leverage in the past is well documented. If Concora is not included in the new Westminster inquiry, it will not surprise people like Captain Gemmell. But that, according to another intelligence source, will tell its own tale. That Concora is still an issue that is perhaps too hot for the public or government to handle. I think the Kinkora paedophile ring is bigger than Kinkora. I think there's not a lot of hope, but I think there's now more hope than there's ever been in the past. Although there's not a lot, there is more than in the past. They took away, I should be a grandfather by now. I, I, I never had a wife, never had children, and all that's passed me. This is my last chance for the state to know how I've ended up because of what they let happen to me. Uh, so it's now or never. That report from uh, Andy Martin in Belfast. <laughs>